them talk if they want to. Talk don't bother me. I want the whole wide world to know. And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moussi. And Dimitri Mobengo Muganis is back with us to talk about his movie. Wow, I, I just can't wait. Uh, we saw I the movie. I'm dangerous with love. I'm dangerous with love. Right? Okay, I am. I want to build up to it. Can I build up the things? I like to build up the things. <laughs> All right, I'm dangerous with love. It's a wonderful movie, and we saw it just the other day, and it was the most. And welcome back to the show. Thank you. Great Ibogaine movie I've ever seen, and we've seen pretty much none. <laughs> no, we've seen several. <laughs> well, have there? What movies have there been about well, Ibogaine? Um, Rites of Passage. Rites of Passage. And then, uh, Facing the Habit. Facing yeah, the habit. Facing right, the Habit, we had her on the show. Right, 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 right. I forgot, but it's, you know, it's not great. the same thing, though, in no, a way. No, but this is a documentary film, and it follows Dimitri through really several film. transformations, I mean, right? It's, it's more than just a documentary, it's a movie. I think Michelle Negroponte, who, uh, by the way, is playing at the IFC until Thursday, all the way through yeah, Thursday, IFC in the Village on 6th Avenue and 4th Street. We'll say that a lot of times, yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, Michelle Negroponte, who's the film director, whose uh, movie before this was Methadonia. Yeah. Um, I think he just did an incredible job, and he's, you know, he's been compared to a sort of a novelist in the way he approaches documentary, and I and I think that he really did it. There's an arc of the uh, of the movie and uh, beginning, well, the middle, and end. Well, it's you because it's your story, and he he did a wonderful job with your story. But you, it was well, and your, your story. Well, your story is a story of multiple transformations. It's, I mean, it's not it's, a hope to your story because the other Ivy Gaines stories, as great as they were. They were difficult, very difficult. You re well, this you isn't actually, easy. <laughs> it's not easy, but you you really like come to you come to a point of, of tension in the movie when when in the middle. You know, we would say everything that happens, but you know, and then your life changes, and it's one of the clearest, you know, big screen uh, type of changes I've ever seen in, in a movie in a in a basically a, not a low budget movie, but a, a moderately budgeted movie. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, what, what Joni said is, is true. There's been so many changes in my life. I was 20 years addicted. I was an IV. I used to inject heroin and cocaine, and I was on methadone for 20 years. And I took Ibogaine uh, uh, almost nine years ago, nine years ago in May, and my life changed. Mm -hmm. I haven't used, uh, used again since then. And then going through this process of, of provide, what I do is I give Ibogaine treatments in New York City. Yeah. And I've done that for many years. Um, and it's illegal, and it can be dangerous. And what, what Michelle was able to capture was, was that transformation of Gabon, um, have, a, have a, 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 a spirituality or religion, if you will, called Briti. And I went there to seek guidance, and that changed my life. When I was initiated into the Briti, that changed my life. And so I think that Michelle did an incredible job of that. Of right. Well, that point for you was expectation, right? I mean, you went from hoping to cure people from addiction to just hoping to touch their lives in a positive way. You know, there's a, I can't think of the woman's name right now. There's a, a beautiful quote that I'd like to, like, like to use, um, I'd like to think about and meditate on. It's, it's from an Aboriginal uh, woman from Australia. And she says, if you're coming here to help me, you're wasting your time. But if you're coming because your liberation is wrapped up with my liberation, then let's walk together. Right. And I think the position of coming to, as a helper really, I really changed that completely. I think the idea, the, just the, that idea, um, sort of, especially with drug users, uh, you have the sort of, I'm helping you from up above. Right. I just want to go and walk in solidarity with people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think was really the transformation. And that's very different. It is very different. I mean, look, I began an aboga, in the sacrament of aboga saved my life. And I wanted to save people's lives, which is a really dangerous idea. That's a great transition. Let's watch the, the uh, trailer to the movie. Okay, let's watch it. Yeah, yeah we can watch it a couple of times. You know, let's see what it's Absolutely. like, though, for folks who might not know. No, but staying idea. clean is, is, it for you. is for you, from you, but it's also going to take help, bro. Your whole lifestyle is based around fucking drugs, man. Tired. I'm really tired. I try everything to quit. Chaos. It involves crime. It involves elements of death. You know, uh, uh, physical danger. I fucking love it. 
and I will continue. I don't, you know, so it's this element of chaos that's always been in my life. Things are going good. I want to mix it up. Got the sacrament in my pocket. And I'm glad to see you. Got the sacrament in my pocket. And the weekend right here. His skin's blue black and his tongue's beat red. He says, these ain't visions. These is my friends. The weekend right here. The weekend right here. Hey, 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 It's a, a movie that um, uh, has already come. Well, it was said coming soon. Tell us a little bit about the origin of the title of the movie. Um, well, I was uh, I was at Sarah Glatt's uh, place in, in Holland. Um, Sarah was the woman who first gave me the sacrament when I was addicted. I was used to be a writer. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I am a writer and, I'm, and a performer and a musician. And uh, what happened was I went into a period in, in, in my dependency and my addiction where I didn't write after my wife had died from her addiction. I didn't write or perform, and I ceased to be a creative person for about five years. Um, I went to Sarah's place in Holland, and um, I woke up, and I felt great, and I had you know 10 beautiful days of starting to come back into my body and walking around Holland and walking around Amsterdam and not wanting to use. Um, what happened was Sarah asked me to write in her guest book, and I wrote a poem that ended with the line over and over again, I'm dangerous with love, I'm dangerous with love, I'm dangerous with love. So that was the first thing I wrote in five years. Wow, yeah. that's so interesting. Yeah. And so Negro Ponte liked that for the title. Did you suggest it? I didn't suggest anything. You know, the great thing about Michelle is I trusted him so much that, you know, uh, I think we had maybe one disagreement or, or two and that was about it. But, it, you know, I just trusted him. What happened with Michelle, let me just say it's at the IFC yes, through you. Thursday. Um, IFC in the village on 6th Avenue. I'm dangerous with love. Um, Michel, um, I just trusted him so much. You know, he's, he's a, he, as a documentary filmmaker, um, a couple things. He helped, the, the first young man that we, that we treated, I walked out of the room and he was cleaning up vomit when I came back in. Mm -hmm. And then there was a scene where we were, that didn't get in the movie, where we were talking to a young woman who does sex work and we were in the park and she was this beautiful blonde girl, young woman I should say, and we were filming her and she started talking about her work and she started to, to cry. And Michelle, instead of going for the, the meat, put down his camera and said, I have a daughter, and started talking to her like a father. And I thought, this is the guy for me. This is mm -hmm. the guy. Guy who yeah. cares. Guy who cares, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you know, we're live, and uh, you can see the numbers on the screen, 212-757-1538, 212-757-1538. And remember, there is about an eight or second or so delay so turn down your TVs if you do call so that we can have the conversation and you're not listening to us on the TV screen. We're, uh, this is Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo with Joan Moosey. Uh, Dimitri Mobengo Maganis is here, and he's uh, the subject of this incredible film, I'm Dangerous with Love at the IFC. And uh, he's been a guest before on this show talking about Iboga or Ibogaine, as we know it. And uh, how did you, you know, what is, how did you... When you first heard about Ibogaine, I mean, there's some incredible, let me get to this. There's this incredible footage in the movie of you at the height of your addicted life, mm -hmm. where you were with your buddies and the three of you talking about drugs in reverential terms. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you love drugs and love taking and drugs. And footage of you performing, I might add. Performing, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, fascinating. Right, and we'll get a little <laughs> bit about your background there. It's sort of interesting. And, uh, you know, and that, that was incredible footage, and the way you worked it in there was pretty much incredible. How, how did you find that footage? Was that kicking around for a while? You, you know, I, I was... Uh, that, 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 that footage, that, those scenes are from uh, a guy named um, uh, Lucky Vasilikas. Mm -hmm. And Lucky's a documentary filmmaker. He made a film about Herbert Hunky and Louis Cartwright called Hunky and Louis, which is a great film. And, you know, uh, we sort of mm -hmm. ran across each other many times. And on the Lower East Side in the 80s, everyone had a camera. You know, before there was, well, there was cameras, people right. walking around with video cameras. So a lot of that was filmed. Those two gentlemen, one is um, um, Roger, uh, Roger Richards, Roger Richards and uh, Marty Matz, the great poet Marty Matz. And there's some films with uh, Herbert Hunky and, mm -hmm. and Louis Cartwright. And uh, that's where that came from. And uh, for me to have, uh, you know, Bwiti, which is the spirituality around Aboga, um, uh, it really has a, it's, part of it is the veneration for your ancestors and your elders. And these guys were beat poets that for me are, are, are my spiritual elders mm -hmm. and, my spir and my ancestors. Well, the transformation is incredible because when you see you know, the obviously talented, energetic young man who has sort of become shallow in his life and turned into the, into the man you are now, it's, it's a redemption story uh, up there with like Osiris and Isis and, <laughs> you know, they chopped you into 14 pieces and put you back together again. Well, you know, it is about redemption, you know. Uh, just to let you know, people who knew me back then, that was... There was there was another eight years of drug mm -hmm. use where if you had seen right, me the, the, if you had seen me like right before I did Aboga I was even much much worse. Um, How did you find out about it? Well, this is part of the redemption story. I found out about it from our mutual <laughs> friend who has now passed, the great uh, Adam Nodelman. Oh, Adam, um, sure. Who's become an ancestor now? Adam is a is a great was a great musician, and I was with his wife at the time, Herta, and we were injecting on the Lower East Side. We were doing heroin, and that's the first time I ever heard the word Bwiti. Iboga or Ibogaine, and they were telling me how great it worked while they were shooting up, <laughs> which would seem counterintuitive, right? Or right. seem that, he, that they don't go together. Well, yeah, <clears throat> that's an interesting thing because the movie does not give you the impression that it's a miracle cure. But at the same time, it has an effect on addicts. It seems to have a counter addictive effect. And I, I can't put my finger on it, but people come out of an Ibogaine trip. And first of all, they don't seem to have the withdrawal symptoms, yeah. That's, which is in, unbelievable. Uh -huh. And then, although the trip itself is so anguishing that it's its, its own anguish, so don't think you're getting out in any easier by taking Ibogaine. Uh, but uh, it's a different sort of effect, and at least you're not going through the horrors of cold turkey. And there's nothing I've seen that does that except methadone, which just keeps you going in another addiction. This really sort of gives you an opportunity to almost think about it and decide if you want to stop or something, right? It gives the opportunity, and plenty of folks go back to using, but I think that we, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, you know, the human race at, the, at this point have really got to re-examine, first of all, um, the, the pathologizing of everything. Right. Um, everyone's an addict or everyone has post-traumatic or whatever. You know, and stop trying to go for for just the, the, the very Western way of looking at at so as at illness or disease. Mm -hmm. um, these pe pe there are people who use again and use again problematically that say I began changed their life, mm -hmm. and how is, or aboga changed their life or Bwiti changed their life, and how is that possible? Well. Yeah. You know, we are really into this puritanical idea of stopping, abstinence, stopping it, abstinence on, everything, on right. everything. And we have to recognize that there are incremental changes that people mm -hmm. go through. Mm -hmm. And we also have to recognize as a society what we're going to do with those, th not those people, the, our family members, our neighbors, mm -hmm. our family members who will continue to use drugs problematically. And for those people, I think Ibogaine and Aboga provide a release, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and I've seen I've seen people come to terms with many, many issues and continue to use. So although for me, it stopped, let me just say this, it interrupted my physical dependence on opiates. That means heroin and methadone without withdrawal. And so the so-called addicts in the audience tonight, it interrupted it. That's, that's without denying it. But what I believe is that this plant has chosen the lowest of the low, i.e. junkies, and, 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 and colonized people, pygmies and Bantu mm -hmm. of, of, of Central Africa, to announce this to the world. And what a better way to mm -hmm. announce it than to have somebody who is physically dependent on a, a junkie, mm -hmm. a physical, the lowest of the low, so-called lowest of the low, although I don't feel that way, and I don't think divinity feels that way. But to, take, to consume this like I consumed it, and then within days not have the physical dependency anymore. That is undeniable. Once you see someone go through that transformation, you might begin to ask other questions like, where does this come from? 
Mm -hmm. Is there other medicines there? Do the people of that region, what do they know? And once we start to look at what those people know, which are the people that dance in the woods and know the fe and wear feathers and know the medicine and the pharmacopoeia of the forest, mm -hmm. and what do those people know and how important are they to us at this stage of our development? Because if we don't listen to them, it's mm -hmm. my feeling that we don't have much time for any listening. Uh -huh. Interesting. Now let's talk some more about the Bwiti because w the first thing that came on the screen in the movie was a quote and um, I just loved that quote. It was, uh, tell us who said it. It was a, it was a shaman in, in or a ganga in Gabon, a teacher of mine, who said, in America they've forgotten what it's like to dance in the village. And I think that's part of our, our sickness, you know. In New York we have, do have common space, but increasingly it's being encroached on. Where is the community? Part of Bwiti is community. And I have to say very humbly that I think Bwiti came to me and chose me. Uh, and my knowledge as a Ganga is very small. My knowledge and my specialty is in addiction. So I don't want to claim, I never claim to be a great Ganga. I'm still uh, an initiate and I'm learning. But I, I think I know something. I think the Bwiti chose me to work on, on this particular aspect. So I just want to say that. Um, but that aspect of it, the, 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 the great uh, psychi psychologist, uh, uh, American psychologist who wrote uh, American Shaman, Bradford Keeney, said that the that the healing arts in the West have forgotten about the performing arts. So, you know, when someone gets up, whether it's a rapper or a dancer or an actress or an actor, and they're on stage and they're putting together words and they're, they're moving you, that is a shamanistic practice. They're changing you while you watch them. Think you're feeling different inside. You're leaving the, hopefully leaving the concert or the, the theater in some way transformed. So that's shamanistic work. The Bwiti have elevated that to a technology, and this is technology that these supposedly primitive people, so-called primitive people, have a very sophisticated technology, and part of it is that dancing. Dancing, the release from dance, dancing with each other, dancing with your grandmother, dancing with your niece and nephew, dancing collectively, but also there are parts of Bwiti that will specific, will have a, the, the, the patient, if you will, the bonzi, and will, will know how to dance around the illness. I'm not claiming I know how to do this. Right. But they will picture the illness, picture the body. They say it's running a movie, and they dance. And, the, and what, they're, what the movement they're actually making is transforming the individual. And for me, part of, part of the continual healing is trying to be able to dance because somehow that was ripped apart from uh, out of me. I grew up in Detroit in the 70s around a lot of African Americans and I'm Greek American and I had a fear of dance. Wow. And I still have that and I'm working on that but I don't believe that I will be free unless I can dance with total freedom. All right. Interesting. <laughs> well, tell us where can people learn to the uh, the I'm dangerous and love dance. Uh, go to uh, uh, IFC and in the village, uh, right across from like Fourth Street, where the basketball courts are. IFC and it's running through Thursday. There's five showings a day. Please come out and support the film. Also, um, we're working on a, a training facility and, and and a healing facility center in uh, Costa Rica, which will be called Oka Centers. All right. The Oka Centers. OkaCenter.com. Wow. OkaCenter.com. Beautiful. Beautiful. We'll have to go visit. Not to do Ivy game, but just to visit. Costa Rica. Yeah, you can right. get you to do some right. Ivy game. Right? I know, people are trying to get me to do Ivy game. All, only, uh, I'm sort of like uh, 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 like the uh, the rich conservative guy who uh, said he wanted to try marijuana and he got on his yacht and when they passed the three mile limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. right, as long as it's Buckley. in a, an illegal place, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. right, right, right. William right. Buckley, right, right, right. Okay, so Actually, you're uh, nothing like William F. Buckley, but, but that's a good thing. I still am not going to do it unless I'm overseas. Okay, come to, come to Costa legal. Rica. Come to Costa okay, Rica. Okay, unfortunately, Rica it's not legal in the United States. I always like to talk about the politics of yeah, the game. Sure, to me, sure. it's interesting. Um, it why is, interesting. is something that, because the callers always, whenever we get calls, they always ask. The first thing, I think for 20 years I've been doing this, the first thing they always ask is why isn't this legal? Let, let me, let's, go, let's go to that, okay? I mean, look, there's, there's, there's a health, there's a healing component of this. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, an artistic component of this, but if we take these medicines um, and just make it for an elite, mm -hmm. which means like people with the PhDs and people who can take ayahuasca and, and can afford the it, the intelligentsia, the intelligentsia, I think we're really missing something. I think what has been missing, uh, what has been increasingly taken away, even through our, our great activists, like like um, I'm not going to name names, but really great activists who have been involved in ibogaine, is that they're forgetting that. 
that Ibogaine presents itself as, a, as, as part of a bigger social justice movement. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is crucially important. That, the, that may be the reason that folks, that, 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 that this is not legal, is first of all, you can't make money on it. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it's found by junkies, by the great Howard Lutzoff, the late great Howard Lutzoff, mm -hmm. and his incredible wife, uh, Norma Lutzoff, who is still with us and, mm -hmm. and still the mother of our sure. movement. Um, junkies found it, and it's from Africa, and not, not only do you release yourself from, from physical addiction, but you might get a little bit of what, it, what, what would be considered the divine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, although there's a lot of talk about, uh, about spirituality or religion in this country, a, a, direct, a direct and personal contact with the divine is a very dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of reasons to keep this, uh, to keep this out, of, out, of, out, of, uh, out of circulation in America, but if we can look at it as not only a healing sacrament from the great country of Gabon, which is the cradle of the world, which we all began at, actually in that place on central West Africa, where if you follow the equator, it's the first country you'll get to in Africa. Um, but if we look at it as part of a bigger social justice movement, you know, I've seen people go through the process of aboga and, you know, seen the wounds of racism, the wounds of sexual abuse, um, sexual Id people coming to terms with sexual identity and gender identity, um, people healing their ancestral scars, mm -hmm. because that's part of the Bwiti, is going back, and we all go back to the, right. same, the same ancestor, regardless of where we come from. So, you know, the fact that... That's a big problem in our culture, don't you think? Healing ancestral scars. It's, it's huge with slavery as a background and so many things that are difficult to surmount you know that's that's the issue this country you know we have to every, every day you know I was at a conference at NYU about for, for psychiatrists and psychologists about racism and drug treatment and I was listening to a lot of that and, and I thought about I think that every day every, all of us should for a couple of minutes black white Hispanic Asian whatever should say that to ourselves that this country was founded by two genocides you should say that to yourself at least at least two genocides but say that self at least once a day once we get at that we really need to get to the core of this and to start this to start to start this healing and the African technology from places like Gabon offer us a way out so we can collectively heal mm -hmm. because unless we unless we get well with ourselves unless we start to treat the indigenous people with 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 respect and to pay back you know, it's not just giving them, it's like giving them back what we took. Mm. Then we're not going to be well. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be well. And, you know, I know that your background isn't from here necessarily. And I know your background, we weren't here during the slavery days. What does it have to do with us? We are the reapers. Mm -hmm. We have, we have, you know, my, my people were being oppressed by the Ottoman. But mm -hmm. I came here and I got all this. And mm -hmm. what does that mean? What do I carry with, my, with that? So I think that the ancestral part, if you look at drug addiction, the, it, you know, when I talk to drug addicts, so-called drug addicts, I always say, you know, do you want to do the ceremony? Do you just want to take a boga? Every one of them, except for one, has said that they want to take, they want to do the ceremony. ceremony. And, mm. and when I look, when I start to talk to it, uh, talk to them about about the ancestral piece, about the spell, mm. the witchcraft of, of this drug, where it's been passed on from gen of, of using drugs and misusing drugs and misusing each other, passed on from generation to generation to a generation, and the spell being perpetuated by someone either touching you or saying something to you or handing you a bag mm. of dope, and then you perpetuating it yourself, it starts to make sense to them. Mm. And so with the boga, not only can you interrupt physical dependency, but you can heal your ancestors. Okay, the movie. Well, let's play the... Uh... I'm Dangerous with Love at the IFC, running through Thursday. Not okay, yes. and what we're going to do is we're going to play the um, clean the trailer it's again. It's for you, from you, but it's also going to take help, bro. Your whole lifestyle is based around fucking drugs, man. Tired, I'm really tired. I try everything to quit. It's chaos. It involves crime. It involves elements of death. You know, uh, uh, physical danger. I fucking love it. And I will continue, I don't, you know, so it's this element of chaos that's always been in my life. Things are going good. I want to mix it up. Got the sacrament in my pocket. And I'm glad to see you. Got the sacrament in my pocket. And the weak here, right here. His skin's blue black and his tongue's beat red. He says, These ain't visions, these is my friends. The Bwiki right here, the Bwiki right here. Hey, 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 hey,
Hey! 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 You know, I've done over a hundred of these. I was not prepared for this, and I acted really badly. We actually had that instrument on this show. Mm -hmm. Tell us about, remind us about that. Uh, it's a, it's probably the first instrument. It's a big bow, and you know, like a, it looks like a bow and arrow. And and what you do is you hit it uh, with the, with the what would be the bow. And so it's, they say it's one of the first instruments. So you can see someone sitting around in a forest, some yeah. thirty thousand years You're ago, right. and he's waiting for his prey, and he's out there by himself. He might have taken a little bit of a boga. He's like. Kind of enjoying yes. himself. He starts, you know, when you're a kid, you're yeah. gonna go like this with a rubber band, and he started playing. And, <laughs> you know, being human beings and being Africans, they uh, elevated it to well, an it incredible was, high art form. It was fun. It was fun to have it here and to have an actual with performance Bobengo, here. Absolutely. Yeah, it was very good. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dimitri Mobengo Muganis, tell us uh, about this film and some last words. We have, we have about two minutes left. You know, uh, the, the film is called "I'm Dangerous with Love." It's at the IFC through Thursday, uh, playing five times a day. Please go out and support it. Um, it's about my journey, um, and watching that clip, uh, I'm always reminded that I owe uh, everything to this plant. I am a servant of this plant. Um, I am uh, initiated into Bwiti, and I'm, I'm very small in the Bwiti, uh, but I have guides like and, and, and teachers like the, the man that you saw staring in the camera with the incredible eyes, who's my teacher, Papa Andre, and um, I stand on his shoulders, uh, and they are big shoulders, and I'm just very mm -hmm. humble to be here. What are you going to go, where are you going with it next? Because you, you've changed your approach, it seems like, to, to Ibogaine and working with Ibogaine. Where do you go next with things? We, we, we do a ceremonial aspect of it now. Um, we're going to continue to work uh, underground in, in, in New York. It's not so underground because we're very obvious about it. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to we got a minute and a half. I just wanted to say that you pretty much, Ibogaine is illegal in the United States. It's legal in many other places, but it's illegal here. Schedule one. You went right out and claimed to the world in that movie. Uh, have you received any, any problems from that? No, not at all. I think that what we have to do is, uh, this is a time where we have little time, and that if we act in, in fear, then we're not going to get anywhere. It's time not to be afraid anymore. It's time to like call on our ancestors or whatever gives you power and step out. We have little, little time, and something like a boga is one of the, one of the, uh, one of the messengers. So you weren't worried a little bit? You know, I used to be worried. I'm not worried anymore, man. I'm not worried about anything. I was mm -hmm. dead and now I'm alive through a boga. And I'm just trying to listen to the plant. Sometimes when it gets in my way, it's my head and not my heart speaking. So I'm trying to listen to my heart. Mm -hmm. And you say where we're going with it, what we want to do is train hundreds and hundreds of people in Costa Rica so that uh, it, it's in the barrio, in the trailer park, in, 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 the, in the reservation, in the so-called hood, in the cul-de-sac of, 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 the, of, the, of the gated community so that people can take this medicine mm -hmm. and to really start to work, work uh, work with this. Thank you, Dimitri. Basi. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going.